Thank you so much for joining me today on this uh, webinar on uh, best practices for identifying your strategic priorities. I'm going to get right into it. Um, and so let's do it. Here we go. Alrighty. So uh, first of all, I want to start with why do strategic planning? Um, there's a lot of reasons for it, um, but one, to focus your resources on the things that are going to have the most impact for your organization um, instead of focusing on things that won't move you forward. Uh, there we go. Perfect. To give you a sense of purpose and direction for your staff, that's one of the most important parts is being able to tell your people what they need to do so they know um, why they're coming to work and, and what purpose uh, them being there has and what they're going to try to accomplish. Not be surprised by or suffer from uh, events that happen outside your organization. Okay, so strategic planning will help you plan for the future as well well as hedge your risk and hedge your bets uh, for bad things, as well as take advantage of opportunities that might come your way. So some of the learning outcomes, some of the things that I promised today. So I'm gonna help you identify best alternatives for you and your team, to be able to prioritize different strategic initiatives, to be able to measure and manage progress against goals. So we talk about KPIs and have a deeper understanding of how of the strategic planning process as a whole and how it can help your organization if implemented correctly. So that's what I promised you and that's what I'm gonna deliver. So a bit about me, uh, I'm the managing partner at SME Strategy. So what we do is we work with organizations to help them with their strategic planning process and we facilitate uh, the development of their strategic plan. I'm an entrepreneur, I've written a book on entrepreneurship and I also speak on leadership, entrepreneurship and strategic planning. Uh, I love soccer, I'm a big soccer fan, season ticket here in my hometown. Uh, and one of my life goals is to visit all 30 major league baseball stadiums. So I'm at seven so far. Um, and then I started SME Strategy after a business partner ripped me off and I wanted to help entrepreneurs with the things that they don't know. So now as a consulting firm, really we do strategic planning to help businesses uh, with the things that they don't know. So it's really rewarding, I love it, and I'm really grateful to be sharing with you today on this. So what are strategic priorities? It's their overarching activities that will help your, day, uh, your team with their everyday activities and then any additional responsibilities that you wanna focus on. So I know that everybody's got teams that have full calendars, everybody's working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, and your time is already full. Now, if you have a priority, it basically just means that you're gonna shift a bit of that time into things that are gonna make the organization move forward. Strategy in its nature is making trade-offs and choices. So we're gonna uh, share how to make those trade-offs and choices in the things that are gonna help your organization move forward uh, in the most effective manner. All right, so why are they important? It makes your strategy easy to understand and easy to communicate to your team and stakeholders. So a lot of people might have a strategic plan and a lot of organizations like yours might have a strategic plan, but if the everybody else in your organization doesn't know what that plan is, then they're just coming to work unsure of what they need to be doing and uh, where they need to be focusing. So it's super important to be able to communicate that plan with your team and your stakeholders. So what I write there is think of New Year's resolutions. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to drink less. I'm going to uh, run 10 miles a week. They're just really easy to understand things that people, oh yeah, I get that. I understand it, it's clear, and I can visualize it, and it makes sense. That's what we're trying to uh, achieve here with strategic priorities. It's just a way to explain the things you need to focus on. So part of the process. So at SME Strategy, we've developed a process called Align Strategy Development. And I'm gonna walk you through that process today. Um, and then creating and identifying priorities is part of a holistic process to create and implement the strategic plan. You can use any methodology you want as long as you get stuff done. But this is what we're going to share and the best practices we've found with all of our clients, SMEs, government, and nonprofits. So now let's get into it. The first step, look at your vision and mission. What priorities, what things are going to make the most impact on you achieving your vision and fulfilling on your mission? A mission put another way is your purpose. Why does your organization exist? 
Why, what is it around to do? Your strategic priorities should help you fulfill your purpose and move you closer to your vision. If it doesn't do those things, don't do them. But we'll get further into that later on this afternoon. So this is what we use as a strategic planning pyramid. And so if you see here, we got the vision at the top. So everything is guided by the vision. You have the mission, which is your purpose. And then today we're going to talk about objectives or strategic priorities. Those are the things that you're going to focus your energy on, the stuff that you can measure, and then what you're going to implement to move your organization forward. Underneath that are the strategies, basically the how of what you're going to do at a high level, and then the how at a lower level the tactics. What are you actually going to physically do on a day-to-day -day basis to move it forward? But for now, we're going to focus on the objectives and then attach with these objectives are KPIs. So like I mentioned, strategic priorities are part of a process. You can break them into pieces, but if it's not aligned with your vision, it's not aligned with your mission, and it doesn't make sense with your strategies and tactics, it's not going to be implemented as effectively as possible. What does that mean? It means that it's gonna cost you more time, more money, more energy, and more stress if you don't do it properly as part of a complete system and as part of a complete strategic planning process. The process for a reason. So let's start with the first step in uh, identifying your strategic priorities and really one of the first steps in uh, creating your strategic plan. What I recommend you do with your management team or your leadership team is run through a SWOT to figure out what you're good at and what you're less good at, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. The reason we do that is twofold. One, you'll, you want to build a strategy where you are strong. You're strong in your strengths, you're weak in your weaknesses. So you won't want to build the foundations of your strategy on a weakness. You might find that in your weaknesses, there will be areas that you need to shore up to be able to get to that vision, to be able to get to what you want to do. You're not equipped to get there. You need to put things in place to move it forward. So analyzing your strengths and weaknesses will give you a, a, the foundation of how to build your strategy, your strategic plan, and your uh, next, you go over your opportunities and your threats. So opportunities, what opportunities exist for your organization, exist for your business, and threats, what are some of the things looming around the corner that might impact the success or your ability to achieve your strategy and to achieve your vision. All of these things uh, contribute to figuring out what do you need to do today, what do you need to do tomorrow, and what do you need to do over the next few weeks to make your organization successful. And of course, every organization have its, has a different view of success, and it's up to you to determine what that success is. So that's why we start with that vision. So once we've done our SWOT analysis, then we want to start analyzing some trends. Now, trends are things that are likely, they are things that we think are going to happen, and that are, you know, we're fairly certain these things are happening in our industry right now. Now, the acronym that we use as part of our process is called PESTLE. There's many different variations of it. You can use steeple or many different ones, but we use PESTLE. So, um, oh, I actually just realized. So uh, it stands for politi political, economical, social, technological, legal, and I see I've written in economical there, so it should really say environmental. So political, economical, social, technological, legal, and environmental. And I'll put a note on there after. So what do those things mean? Over the next few years, what's going to happen in a political arena? Now, does that mean that changes with, the, let's say, presidential election? How will that affect your organization? And how will that affect your plan and your vision? Either the state level, the uh, city level, or, of course, federal or even global. If you're doing business in another country and they are having a change in political regime, how is it going to affect your ability to do business in that area? It might be better or it might be worse or there might be no change. The important thing is you need to identify it so you can make plans that fall within that, uh, that space. We talked about a SWOT just before this and largely the strengths and weaknesses and even the opportunities and threats are internal. They're inside your house. 
you can largely control them. Now, when we talk about these trends, these are things that are happening in the outside world that you might not necessarily be able to control, so you have to react to. So we talk about risks and mitigation. This is one of those things. So we understand political, economical, what's happening uh, in the world of finance that might affect your ability to do business. You know, people are ringing up uh, high amounts of credit card debt, their household debt is higher, uh, maybe salaries are going up, maybe salaries are going down, maybe minimum wage is changing. What effect, if any, is that gonna have on your business or on your organization? Might be positive, might be negative. Social, so trends with people, um, desire for organic food, maybe more exercise, uh, maybe people are more connected because of technology or what have you, um, those type of things. Again, what effect are they gonna have on your business or organization? Technological, you know, the, the cost of technology is going down, so maybe in a few years you might be able to adapt to different technology, Things like Hyperloop and any other sort of travel are becoming cheaper. So what is what changes in the world of technology are going to affect your business or organization? And so on with legal. Are there any laws that might affect your business in the future or now? Um, and then environmental. So we talk about global warming and climate change. How are trends in this arena going to affect your organization and your ability to achieve your vision and your mission. All you need to do is be aware of it, because if you're not aware of it, you're gonna get caught by surprise, and it's gonna cost you time and money to react. Does an organization, do you want to be proactive or reactive? So this is our strategic uh, planning pyramid that we use at SME Strategy. And the reason it looks like this, we talked about our vision, we talked about our mission, what is your company purpose, and then now is when we're gonna start identifying strategic priorities that are gonna help you achieve your mission and achieve your vision. When we look at the goals, then we're gonna attach a KPI to them, and at the end of the day, it's what's going to move the needle on the vision. Okay, so if the vision is 100%, you wanna figure out how you're going to move progressively towards it to accomplish it. And then we talk about specific objectives and initiatives, and those are the things that you're going to do to move the needle on these objectives. So how do you determine the best strategic priorities? So there's a few ways you can do it, and here's a few that are outlined. So you wanna know what people care about? Ask them. So I'll talk about this a bit later, but you gotta realize that your organization is made up of people that have decisions and they make decisions every day. So you as a management team or you as a board of directors might have impact, but then there's also people on the ground that are working through these things every day. And that if you only take one uh, way of gathering data, if you only do it from the top level, uh, you're gonna have uh, less information and less good information uh, when you're building out your strategic plan. So here are a few ways that we use. So you can run a survey, whether you do it company-wide or you just do it at the management level. Ask questions that are gonna help you determine your strengths and weaknesses, figure out what trends are out there or what priorities that you might wanna focus on. Uh, depending on how robust your planning system is, you could brainstorm with teams over uh, you know, a frequent basis. It might be part of your process so much so that you do it every day or every week or you might be doing it just every quarter when you're trying to figure out what to do. This is a little bit more in depth, but if you create a culture of sharing, it's gonna help you with your strategic planning overall. Again, we talked about having a plan that comes from the top and then gets pushed down. What I'll encourage you to do later is having information flow both down and upward. Having the top leadership communicate and share with the frontline people and the frontline people being comfortable and being supported because of a culture to be able to contribute to the strategic direction of the organization. And then finally, if you wanna really go through this process, have a strategic planning offsite. Um, that's what we do at SME here and just take time to make strategic decisions and have conversation about the strategic direction of the organization. So here are 
two of the questions that we ask as part of our survey process. If you had to pick one goal or target for us to hit over the next 12 to 24 months, what would it be? The reason we ask that question is if you could, you ask everybody in your organization, where do you think we should uh, put our priorities? It's really putting your money where your mouth is. So if you could pick one goal or one target that would move the organization forward, what would it be? And out of all the organizations that I work with, I have yet to see everybody have the same answer. And that's what's so interesting, that different people on different levels of the team and in different responsibilities will all have a different strategic priority. What you have to do as a management team or as a leadership team is distill all that information and prioritize where you need to uh, put your money and put your energy so that you can move closer to your mission and vision faster. And that's why we talk about getting alignment, uh, alignment with your priorities and your vision and then alignment with your people so that everybody's on the same page as far as where the organization is going. So if you had one, to pick one goal or target for us to hit over the next 12 to 24 months, what would it be? I encourage you to just ask your people that. You'll be surprised and happy to see what comes back. Next, <clears throat> and this is a little bit more abstract, if you had three wishes that would make your job better or make the company better, if you had three wishes that would make your job better or make the company better, what would they be? Again, these are the people you're asking the people that are in the trenches every single day running your organization and implementing the strategies that you create. So if, if you ask them what they think and they give you good feedback back, it shows that you actually care about their job and their work, which means you're going to have a more engaged workforce, which means that really you're going to get more out of them. And that's why you invest in people so that you can get a better return or get more productivity. And if they feel like you care, you really need to care. If they feel like you care, they're going to give you everything they have. It's not going to become just a job. They're going to be passionate about coming to work. They're going to want to contribute. They're going to want to stay late. They're going to want to be able to move everything forward. And that's what makes my job super rewarding is being able to get organizations to that place from a culture standpoint where everybody is wanting to be um, in the right place. So excellent. So. Um, excellent. Oh, wonderful. Hi, Denny. <laughs> so the important side note that I was just talking about, your organization is made up of people. Okay. People that come to work, they have a job, they're coming for a purpose and you know, they're not just a paycheck. They're people who are, uh, you know, leaving their families to work and you have a choice. You can either find a job. Uh, the person can get a job just for the sake of having a job or they can come to work for a company that they're passionate about or an organization they're passionate about that they care about contributing to. But they also have feelings. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about the value of HR these days as a role. So HR in the past was more of a function to fill out forms and make sure people got the information. Now we start talking about people and talent and getting the right people to contribute uh, to your strategy. So understanding that you have to get the right people on your team is so key um, to be able to be successful in your strategic priorities. So the question I would ask you for you to ask yourself and ask your other managers, are you managing them? Are you leading them? Or are you working with them? There's a lot of images out there, the difference between a manager and a leader. But if you really want to be a collaborative leader, you need to ask your people what they care about and ask them how they feel like they can contribute. And you're gonna get more out of them and you're gonna get more done at the end of the day. So they hold the key to the success of your plans. If you don't get buy-in with your people, if you don't get them on board, then you're not gonna be successful. Or you're gonna be a lot less successful than you think you should be. Okay, so now we're gonna start putting this picture together. Based on your SWOT, your trends and direction, and the guidance you've gotten from your people, what are some of the important priorities that you need to move the needle on your organization? What do you need to do to move closer to your vision? You've probably at this point uh, gotten a bunch of insights from your people about, well, here's where we think we should uh, put our energy. Here's our biggest goal. Here are our three wishes. And if you've done a strategic planning offsite, then you've started to brainstorm uh, different priorities and different goals and different areas where you can uh, 
be move the needle on your organization. So how do you prioritize all of these? So a dot democracy is a very sophisticated way to uh, ask people, where do you think is the most important place for our organization? You know, based on this laundry list of 20, 30, 40 or more objectives. And uh, just as an aside, if you ask your people and you really do a good survey and get a wide range of results, there's going to be a lot of themes that come up. It's going to become evident where you need to prioritize. And it's really, really cool because you're like, oh, yeah, we all know what it is. And now we have our people agreeing with us. So we should probably put our money and our energy there. But if there is uncertainty, just ask, you know, where if you had top three priorities, what would you pick? And put like a little post-it note dot on there and then see what comes up. The other more sophisticated manner is doing a cost benefit analysis. Uh, we wouldn't do a cost benefit analysis as part of a two day strategic plan. Um, but if you have planning as part of your process, then I'm sure you'll do cost benefit analysis as time goes on. And the other one is just tacit knowledge or expertise. Your leadership team knows your business better than anyone else, knows your organization better than anyone else. And you'll be able to figure out pretty quick based on your instinct, intuition, and just organizational knowledge, where the energy and where the time needs to go, okay? That's really how you prioritize. Um, strategy is an art and a science, and prioritization is the hard part of strategy. You can't do everything. And so prioritization, really figuring out, you know, where is the, where are you gonna get the best bang for your buck moving forward on your strategy? And unfortunately, there is no right answer. There's what you think is the right answer, but there's no 100% correct answer. So measurements. What other measures would contribute to that larger goal? So when we talk about the objectives, if you could think three of three, not more objectives, that would move the needle uh, or one most important goal, what would they be? So you have three priorities. What is the one most important of those three, but have three? The reason we say three priorities is because you can't effectively allocate resources across too many priorities. If you have 10 things that you're working on, you're going to be able to give at maximum 10% uh, to each, which doesn't mean you're, you're not going to move forward on that effectively. In addition, there's switching costs every time you change priorities. So there's waste there. Another way to think of it is if you're in a 10 story building, and each story was a priority. So you go to story three, oh, and then you have to go to the fifth floor to work on this, and then you have to go to the third floor to work on this again, and then the first floor, you're wasting time taking the stairs or the elevator. So figure out which priorities are the most important and pick them. How do you measure it? I would encourage you to pick one measure for each strategic priority that would have the most impact on the vision. And a way to think of it is moving from X to Y by date, okay? And the question you should then ask yourself is, how can everybody in the organization contribute to this measure? So let me take a step back. Why is measurement important? Everybody knows that what gets measured gets managed, but why is it important for you? because it acts as a scoreboard. It acts as a scoreboard for you. It acts as a scoreboard for your entire organization. And it really lets you know when you're actually successful. So if you say, I'm going to do push-ups versus I'm going to do 20 push-ups. Okay, we're going to increase revenue or we're going to increase revenue to $20 million. We're going to diversify into new markets or new products versus we're going to launch five new products in the next 12 months, and we're gonna enter four new countries over the next 10 years. It makes it very clear, measurable, and understandable for you, your stakeholders, and your people to know where the organization is going. A question to ask yourself is, if success was a place, how would you know if you got there? And if you don't have measurements attached to your strategic priorities, you're going to never know if you are successful and if it was worthwhile.
So on your strategic priorities, whenever you determine what they are, make sure you have a key performance indicator, a KPI, a measurement attached to it. And to measure it, moving from X, which is your current state, to Y, which is your future state, by a date. And how can everybody in this organization, in your organization, contribute to that measure? We talked about people and wanting to be valued and having passion and purpose for their jobs. They have to know that they can come into work and whatever they're going to do that day is going to move the needle on one of those priorities. Otherwise, their work is going to be less satisfying than it could be, and they're not going to be as engaged as they could be. So I hope that makes sense. So now we're going to talk about um, really implementing the measurements here, and we're going to use the balance scorecard. And I know you're reading these, so I'm going to take a sip of water. All right. So the balance scorecard is a great methodology to be able to understand the different things that you're measuring in your organization. There are four key parts to the balance scorecard. There's financial measures. Of course, we talked about increasing revenue or increasing customer, total customer spend or what have you. We have, so just before we do that, it's really easy to measure financial benefits. It's very, very clear. But in business and in organizations, not-for-profits or government, you do things other than create money, okay? There are certain processes you have to put in place to make that money happen. You have to teach and train your people or build capacity. And then you also have to take care of your customers, whether your customers are people who pay you or your customers are just where you, you're part of your purpose, part of your mission. But they all contribute to the vision and the strategy. So I'll go over this a little bit later, but everything works together to ultimately be able to produce financial benefit or learning and growth or customer benefit or benefit for your processes. And it all contributes to your vision and strategy. So. There are four parts to the balance scorecard. There's the objective, which we talked about, your strategic priority. We have your measures, is your KPI. How are you gonna actually measure the success of your uh, project, of your initiatives? We have the target, if success was a place, how would we know if we got there? And then the initiatives. What are the individual tasks that you're going to do to move the needle and meet your targets? So objectives, what you're working towards, the measure, the actual uh, measurement, KPI, target is the end point, and the initiative is what you're going to do on a day-to-day -day basis to move the needle. So if you want examples of some strategic goals, you can uh, just Google strategic goal examples, SME strategy, and you'll find that. Um, but strategic goals, examples, KPI measurements, strategy, business planning, you'll find it on our website and in our blog. And I'll send it out with uh, the webinar replay as well. So going back to the balance scorecard. So we figured out how to run the objectives, the measures, the targets, and the initiatives. And you can run this on an Excel spreadsheet if you want. Um, what's important to note is that it works upward and downward. So learning and growth and capacity, if that's a strategic priority, it will contribute to better business processes, which will contribute to financial benefit. If you make more money, then you can improve your business processes and it's actually going to improve your, your people as well. Excellent. Same thing with customers. So financial, you're going to uh, send benefit to your customer and, so, and then it's gonna to contribute to your learning and growth and contribute to your vision and strategy. Conversely, if you invest in your people, you get more customer training, customers are gonna be happier and then it leads to financial benefit. So everything is connected as part of this planning process. So another note on KPIs. When you create these KPIs, again, we talk about pulling it from your people, you have two choices as a manager or as a leader. You can push this on your people and tell them, this is what you're doing and do it. Or you can pull it from your people to get realistic targets uh, that they are on board to hitting versus saying, hey, I need you to do 100 sales calls per day. And they say 100 sales calls is not realistic. I will be happy to do 50. And I will do 50 because I know that's achievable. 
If you tell them to do 100, they're going to be resigned and cynical, and they're not going to feel like they contributed to the plan. But if you ask them what the realistic target would be, then they are more likely to have buy-in and more likely to move forward and, uh, and achieve it. Again, your team is more likely to be engaged and bought into the plan if they are consulted throughout the process. So we'll do this in another webinar, but talking about buy-in and change management is so important. Got to make sure you have the people that are engaged with your plan and willing to move it forward. And then what targets are achievable and realistic. You don't want to start putting plans out there that nobody can actually hit because your implementation is going to suck and people are not going to be passionate about doing it. So now we're going to talk about a bit about uh, allocating resources to achieving priorities. So project plan with the balance scorecard, you have your objectives, your strategies, and your tactics. Next, it's important to understand who is responsible for the initiatives. Now, I encourage you, don't pick a department when you say who is responsible for these things. Pick a human being. That's where the buck stops with that person. Um, and I'm so sorry about those notifications, guys. Um, who is responsible for the initiatives? And then don't, don't swim part way when we talk about allocating resources. Once you have your objective, once you have your project plan, and once you know uh, where you want to go and what you need to do, it's important to give enough resources for that plan to be successful. And why I say don't swim part way, if you know that it's going to take uh, you know, $50,000 to move this initiative forward, and you say, nah, we're going to give it 30 grand. Well, it's like saying, okay, well, I can swim 10 miles, but the island is 20 miles away. I'm going to die on the way there, and it's not going to do anybody any good. So if you're not going to allocate the proper amount of resources to a project, don't take on the project. Otherwise, it will not be successful. Okay, so don't swim part way. So just as a recap, we talked about our vision, where we're going, the blueprint of the organization. We talked about our mission and our purpose. Why does the company exist and who does it exist to serve? And now we have a handful of goals and priorities that are going to help us move forward in achieving our vision. We figured out how to measure them because we have KPIs and we built a project plan and we have our specific objectives and initiatives as to what we're going to do to move these things forward. At the end of the day, what's going to move the needle on the vision? So here are some best practices for being successful in uh, creating your strategic plan. So one, don't pick too many strategic priorities. Uh, too many priorities already, then it's going to be really hard to actually implement them. As I mentioned earlier, if you have 10 priorities, you have none. We recommend having three to four priorities, and once you've met those goals, then move on and move on to something else. But it's like explaining somebody, you know, how on my PowerPoint, I say, oh, there's three points for each. Do this, do this, and do this. Same way with your people. If you tell them, we're going to focus on this, we're going to focus on this, and we're going to focus on this, they can remember that versus focus on this, and then this, and this 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 they're not going to know what the hell to do and they're not going to do anything keep a handful of priorities and make it easy to communicate so now we're going to talk about actions what can you do right now to move this forward so get the ball rolling with easy wins once you have your project plan figure out what you can do to move the needle forward right away and show people that there's progress Getting easy wins is key to making sure that people get on board with your plan. But if they see you've created a strategic plan or strategic priorities and then nothing happens, they're going to get resigned. They're going to say, oh, this is just another one of those things that management's cooped up. It's going to pass in a little while and I'm not going to bother getting involved with it because you know nothing's going to happen. You need to get action and you need to get easy wins so people see that the ball is rolling. Take your team and plan 30, 60, 90 day targets. Depending on your planning cycle, you might have a five year vision, a 10 year vision, or a 25 year vision, but just focus on what you can do in 30 days, and then 60 days, and 90 days. 
And that's how you're going to get those easy wins that's going to get people galvanized around your plan and around your strategic priorities. And then again, who is responsible for the success of the initiative? Assign it to a human being because it will be their responsibility to take it on. Don't assign it to somebody because nothing will get done if it's somebody's responsibility. But if the buck stops with a human being, then you will be more successful in achieving that. And then the other thing I encourage you to do is look up the Cotter change model. Um, and when we talked about change management, uh, the Cotter change model will be extremely helpful for you. So talk about communicating. If you are a leader here or you are the CEO, then you have to communicate to your management and then your management will communicate the message down to their people and they will be the ones who are going to share the plan. But it can't be like broken telephone. If it's like broken telephone, then people are going to get confused because it's if you're the CEO, you need to tell the management and the management needs to tell their managers that need to tell their frontline people. And everybody needs to be clear on what the plan is and what the strategic priorities are. And if you notice, the arrows go both ways. So that's that difference between the push and the pull. Communication has to go from CEO down to the employees, and then the management team also needs to listen to employees to know what to focus on as well. So how do you communicate your plan? There's a few ways you can do that. You can do that through text. So if you write a document, a big plan, you can do it through audio. If you wanna send out a message or MP3 to your team or a recording, you could send out a video message to let people know what the strategic planning priorities are. Uh, you can have meetings, as we discussed. You can do strategic planning meetings. You can have offsites. You can have a daily scrum. You can pretty much do anything as long as you're communicating how far the organization is going or where it's going, what it needs to focus on, what the strategic plan is. Okay, and other. Do whatever you want to do. If you want to do an interpretive play, if you want to... Uh, you know, bring people out for pizza and every week you talk about strategy over pizza, whatever works for you, do it. The important part is that you communicate the plan so it moves forward. So in summary, look inside and out. Analyze your organization from a strengths and weaknesses perspective and figure out what you can build your strategy on. And then look outside of the organization to see what's coming and to ride the wave of trends and possibilities and opportunities in the future. If you don't do that, then you risk uh, being surprised by something and it's gonna screw up your plan, it's gonna cost you more time, and it's gonna cost you more money. Align your priorities with your mission and vision. Your vision is that true north. That's where you're going, that's what your or whole organization is aiming for. That's the finish line. So if your priorities aren't aligned with your mission and vision, then you're wasting time, you're wasting money. Make goals that everybody can contribute to. Galvanize your team, it's gonna make everybody more effective and you're gonna move forward faster. But if the people on your organization don't know how they contribute to the success of what you're doing, then they're not going to. And you're just not getting as much out of your people as possible. And finally, make the priority simple to understand, simple to explain, and simple to measure. Again, everybody needs to be bought in with a plan so they know how they can contribute and how they can move it forward. And then you're gonna to have to communicate the plan so that everybody understands uh, where the team is at and where they're going. So make the priorities simple to understand, simple to explain, and simple to measure. And that's why we say focus on a handful instead of too many. Don't do too much. You're gonna waste time, you're gonna waste money, and it's gonna be stressful. So keep it simple, move it forward, and continually be aiming at your vision get those strategic priorities done, and then move on to something else. You're gonna create a culture of high performance, your people are gonna be happy to come to work, and they're gonna be more bought in with what you're doing if they see real progress and real change. If they get come to work every day, and nothing happens and nothing changes, they're gonna be cynical and resigned, and they're not gonna get a lot done. So. I hope that helps you uh, build the foundations for strategic planning and for picking strategic priorities in your organization. And I uh, really look forward to sharing with you on our next webinar. One thing I'll mention before we leave today, 